names a single attribute for masculinity, which is going to come from a, a place other than trauma or pain. I talk about this all the time. Zero. People say I've had a traumatic life. I say, well, then you're very, very fortunate. You had a traumatic life. Now you may have misused that trauma. You may have misplaced it. You may have accepted the matrix telling you that you now have an excuse to fail as opposed to using it to grow. But every single man of value went through trauma and they went through pain. It's going to be painful to get strong, painful to get rich, painful to become important. It's going to be painful to become good with women. Your heart's going to get broken a bunch of times. You have to be prepared for the pain. If you're not ready for pain, you're never going to be anything that, that matters. My kickboxing coach used to say to me, I used to come in the gym, say, what do you hate the most? And I said, I hate running. I said, okay, you're going running. I say, why? He goes, because whatever you hate is what you need. Whatever you hate is what you need. I want to spar, bag work, pads, no problem. Running, I didn't want to run, but that's what you need. And that's what life's about. You're not going to be able to go through life avoiding pain and also becoming a man of quality. All right, so apparently the Andrew Tate situation is getting dicier for Andrew Tate. And uh, he's apparently going to be facing new charges that are getting added on to the charges that he's facing now. And, uh, and they're charges that are going to, you know, when I say them, you're going to be like... Yeah, that's uh, that's going to be probably problematic for him, and uh, and I'll tell you what the what the sentences are if he gets convicted, and so on and so forth. And I'll tell you what I think the likelihood of him getting convicted is now. I found this channel that talked a bunch about what the what the additional charges are going to be, and apparently I had missed this detail when the judge extended his thirty days. So I did the video about how I thought it was very wrong that they were extending his his time in jail when they didn't have a case yet that they thought they were confident enough that they could convict on. Uh, and I'll talk about all that again. And also, I've been watching a lot of Andrew Tate content lately. I mean, not a lot, but I watched much more than I had before. And my opinion on him has changed dramatically. And, you know, I want to talk about that. And I also want to talk about what I think the outcome of this trial is going to be. And, uh, and we'll go from there. But super quick, no ads. I just wanted to say this. If you are an aspiring YouTuber... Like if you're someone who's thought about doing YouTube or you're someone who started a YouTube and it's just getting started and it's small, I have something for you. It's not, it's not like a package. I'm not trying to sell you anything. There's no money changing hands, but I have a need in my operation that I think will help you grow your YouTube. So if you are someone who falls in that category, you've been thinking about doing it or you're already doing it, uh, email me real Jesse on fire at Gmail. And uh, we'll see if we can help each other. Okay, so also, if you have not subscribed to my channel and you're watching my stuff, I'm sure that you've already seen me say this, so I'll say it one last time. You are stealing my content if you haven't subscribed. That's the cost. Hit subscribe. That's the cost. You have access to all of my videos. Just be a person that lives up to your end of the bargain. That is the bargain. Don't be a person that doesn't live up to your end of the bargain, dude. Anyway, uh, but I love all you guys. Thank you guys for the support. So, <clears throat> so here's the deal. Like I said, so this guy's channel that I found, um, I will obviously I'll dig up his I'll dig up his stuff and I'll put it in here. You know, when I edit, I'll I'll show you what the guy's name is. I can't remember, but basically he said that. Uh, well, going back, so the 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 prison stay got extended thirty days. I did a video about it about a week ago. So about a week ago, it was coming up on thirty days that Andrew Tate had been in jail, and the judge extended it an additional thirty days. Right, so I knew that I knew that that happened. And I did the video about it saying that like, it's basically like kidnapping someone. And, uh, cause I just, I just fundamentally have a big problem with that. Putting people in jail before they've been convicted of something, or at the very least keeping them in jail. If you don't even have a case, you think you convict on like do your investigation, build your case and then arrest the person. I just don't, I don't understand how that seems logical or okay to anyone. You know what I mean? Like it's one thing if like a guy gets caught on video committing a murder or if there's overwhelming evidence that someone did something and they are a flight risk like Andrew Tate certainly is since he talked on camera so much about having 90 bank accounts in 90 countries and you know different passports and such and as smart as Andrew Tate is and he is very very smart I think everyone can learn a big lesson of what not to do from this particular incident that's happening with Andrew Tate. And that is, if you are even on the margins of legality, don't talk about it online. You know, I mean, it seems like common sense, obviously, but I mean, there, this is, he is getting killed right now because of things that he said online. I said, if you could build yourself like a character inside of a video game, 
Yes. And you didn't take, it didn't take any work, any effort, any years of pain, yeah. any mental, uh, any mental strength. You could just quickly just tick the assets. Yeah. Nobody would choose to be weak over strong. Nobody would choose to be fat over thin. Nobody would choose to be a soy piece of shit. So when these people are soy pieces of shit and pretend they want to be that, they don't. They yeah. just don't have enough mental power to stop themselves from being. The additional charge is money laundering. And he's talked a bunch of stuff that can be used against him in that category also. Which is, I mean, so now he's facing sexual assault, uh, human trafficking or whatever, money laundering. He said on video, he said the thing on video about using Bitcoin to, uh, to not pay taxes. That's tax evasion also. So tax evasion and money laundering. Apparently he owns these casinos. So, I mean, there's nothing illegal about owning a casino and you make plenty of money. So that doesn't mean that it's uh, necessarily money laundering. But, uh, but anyway, apparently the, the, uh, the, the penalty for money laundering and tax evasion is something like, th uh, I think he said three to 10 for those charges. And then the other stuff is very long. The, and uh, he faces like well over 10 years. <clears throat> so, yeah. So that's, that's what's up with the charges. Now, here's what I think is going to happen. I think he's going to get convicted, man. I do. And I don't want him to. I just want to make that very clear, dude. I, I genuinely, I don't want, I don't want him to get convicted. And, and I'm saying that without all the context in the world. Like I don't, you know, I don't, I don't know exactly what happened between him and these girls. I find the, I find their stories hard to believe. You know, I, I just do especially after watching those videos that the, that like hit the girls that were still with him put out. They're like, this is, the, they're like, this is one of the girls that is accusing him of this. Here's her. This is a month after the incident that she's saying happened. And she said, she's just like, la, 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 like just dancing at a party. And you're like, come on. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I'm not saying that someone can't get assaulted and then act like everything's cool, but it's, I mean, there's, there's like 10 girls in G strings at this party. And you're like, you're telling me that he just was like, you know what? I, I I'm just going to take it. I'm just going to take it from her. It's not impossible. I don't know. But like, anyway, I don't know. But like I said, I watched him a lot more of his content this week. And uh, he is just extremely intelligent, very well thought out. And I honestly think he is a, he seems like a different person. And I realize a guy like him, very strategic, very intelligent, can play both roles. He could turn back into the other guy in, in one second if he thought it would benefit him. But I think that part of his conversion to Islam had to do with a reinvention. Like, I think he wanted to distance himself from the version of himself that he put out earlier. I'm not, like, questioning his faith or anything like that. But, like, th that... So, when people do, like, the born-again Christian thing, right? Part of what they're doing is they are, they are, like, this is a moment in the sand, a line in the sand where there is the before version of me and there's the after. Or like when people get baptized, when they dip them in the water or whatever. It's like you you went in one person and you come out another, right? That's That that actually is the, you know, kind. Like I think the symbolism is also you wash the sin off yourself or whatever, but you get dipped in the water, you wash the sin off yourself, and then you come out a different person. You're basically starting from scratch, right? And, you know, like... I just, I like the idea of people having the ability to do that, you know? And I realize like that's not necessarily like the exact purpose of religion, but it certainly is part of it. It's like you live your life by a certain set of rigid kind of rules and everyone agrees to them and, and that's what it is. I mean, that's like when people get into the like, you know, oh, God doesn't exist thing. I'm like, I, I honestly think the, the the least intelligent people in the world, like the people who are, to me, clearly the most ignorant people in the world are the people who will like go to battle with people arguing that God doesn't exist. I just look at, I'm like, <laughs> dude. And it's, and it's, a, it's a combination of things too, for why I believe that. It's like, it's because A, the smarter a person thinks that they are while not actually being smart, the stupider they look to me, right? Like if a person is presenting themselves as just like a regular person with an opinion, then I'm not, I'm not measuring them up against 
well, are you really that smart? I'm like, oh, this is a, this is a person with, a, with an opinion. But if a person is presenting themselves as the smartest person in the room, and then their position is so laughably, provably obvious that they don't know, not that they're wrong necessarily, they just, it's impossible for you to know. And they're stating it as fact. I just go, you're an idiot, okay? Like if you can't see why you are so absurdly lacking enough information to make a claim like that, then I mean, how on earth could Sam Harris possibly know that God doesn't exist? He's a human. You're a human, dude. You don't know shit. You were a monkey two minutes ago. You know nothing. Hey, how did the universe start? The Big Bang. Says who? Says some other human. <laughs> oh, yeah? Oh, some other human told you that the Big Bang did it? And you're just like, yeah, jeez. Oh, only idiots don't realize that the universe started with the Big Bang. <laughs> oh, yeah? Is that right? And again, who told you? A human much smarter than you. I'm like, yeah, but I'm a moron. I'm a human. I'm basically a monkey. He's a little bit smarter than me and he knows how the universe started. Get the fuck out of here, dude. Get the fuck out of here, Sam Harris. You don't know anything. You know nothing. Okay? Simulation theory. Okay. So is the person who created the original simulation, could you call that person a god? You know, if they wrote the rules to the simulation, because I mean, is that scientific enough for you to be able to wrap your brain around a creator that exists and fills all of the the ideas of what people kind of define as a God? Like, you know, is that putting it in a scientific context that you could swallow? It's just so fucking dumb. The idea that a person could, te- could, could argue with you passionately that God doesn't exist. It's so dumb. Okay. I have no idea. You want to know the smartest answer is either you are a faith-based person and you are a religious person and God exists for you, or you don't know. End of story. There is no, I know for sure there's not. Shut up, dude. Shut the fuck up with that. God. That's like one of my biggest pet peeves in the world. It's when people try to get in that argument and it's always, always these like, Sam Harris type dudes because they're always so fucking snooty you know because how could you not be how could you have that opinion and not be a know-it-all snooty idiot you know anyway uh I'm sidetracked so I the point I'm making basically is I think Andrew Tate actually has a lot to offer you know I watched his stuff and the messages that he communicates are good ones now you know (laughs) Like, I understand he has a lot of stuff out there that might have sounded bad before. But the stuff that I listened to that's all recent, I was like, this is this is really good stuff for young people to hear. I listened to one that he said uh, that he was talking about today where he's talking about his feelings and his, his psychological, uh, like his psychological approach to everything. People who train every day don't want to train every day. They are not motivated to train every day. They are something else. Motivation is the wrong word. They are not motivated. They are disciplined. Andrew, are are there ever days where you don't feel like working out or you don't feel like doing work? Every day, I don't feel like doing things that I still do. It's called discipline. It's called being a man. It's not about feeling like doing it. If you only do things you feel like doing, you know what you end up doing? You end up sitting around with a belly drinking soya fucking latte bullshit. That's what you end up doing if you only do what you feel like doing. You have to wake up and say, I don't feel like training, but I must train. I will only drink water. You need to do what you're supposed to do, not what you feel like doing. That's the difference between a man and a child. You do not become a man doing what you feel like doing. You become a man doing what you're supposed to do. The men on the Titanic didn't feel like dying that day. It's your duty. It is your duty to not be a fat piece of But I'm too stubborn to fail. I've decided I'm going to do this, and so I'm going to. That's exactly what I'm like in many, many cases. Like with jiu-jitsu. You think it's easy for, for someone like me with a combat sports brand who is at, you know, who who's, you know, could walk into a gym and at least look, you know, half decent in, in a stand-up to go in and put a fucking white belt on and go to practice every day not knowing shit for fucking, year, you know, multiple years. You think that's easy? It, do, it doesn't, like, because my point is like, no, but I decided I want to be a black belt now. So it's like, so I'll just do the work. 
Like the fact that most, I mean, because that, in all honesty, that's why most people don't do it. That's why they don't. That's why a lot of people don't do it. They don't want to go in and wear a white belt scarlet letter because the kind of people who would aspire to be great at jujitsu have a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of them have a lot of kind of like, what's the word? Like identity tied up in being a tough guy, right? And then walking around with a white belt on is the exact opposite of that. <laughs> you know, it's like, you're, you, it's like, if you don't opt in, then you don't have, you know, like, it's like, oh, you're not playing. You're like, you're not playing. That's why I didn't do it when I was much younger. Cause like I said, I still had an ego then. I've told you guys this a million times. I still had an ego then. I had to have my ego destroyed and then revisit this where I was like, oh, I don't give a shit about wearing a white belt. I want to be good at this. So I'll just go do it. I'm stubborn. I don't care. I don't fucking care. I'll just be the toughest white belt in the room all the time. I'll be the toughest fucking round with a white belt on that anybody has ever had. And that's my goal, right? Like, so I totally align with his message. Like I completely align. And he was saying like his feelings are irrelevant. It doesn't matter how he feels. I can wake up sad. I can ache. I can have a, a busy day, stressed, etc. I will complete the same tasks as if I woke up in a fantastic mood. I'll do the same things because how I feel has no bearing on the things I'm going to do with my day because I have duty to myself and to my bloodline. And what I'm going to say to you is, because you think there's something wrong with you. You go, well, I don't, I lack motivation. You hear this one? I don't have the motivation to go to the gym. Well, here's the news flash. Neither did I. And I still did it. So now what are you going to say? Now you have no excuse, right? Yep. Mm. Oh, you're scared to get in the ring. So was I. I still did it. Scared to get in the cage. So was I. I still did it. Being a man isn't about not feeling things. It's about acting the way you're supposed to act regardless of how you feel. This once again ties into your network, the people around you, everyone else around you. When you say you feel a certain way, if they don't check you, then why are you hanging around with them? Thanks. If you're going to sit there and go, I feel sad, and your friends are going to go, oh, bro, you feel sad, man? Sorry to hear that, bro. It's hard to be sad, bro. You're sad, bro? Oh, we're sad too, bro. I was sad last week. Uh -huh. What the f is wrong with you? I can't even... Tristan, I feel sad. Which, shut up. My, my boys around me, there is no weakness in my circle. Yeah. You need to create your reality. So you got to keep this in mind. I'm tired of hearing guys message about how they feel. I don't feel motivated. I don't feel. Feel, 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 feel. Leave the feelings to the girls, right? That's what they do. We act. We're men of action. We get things done. So the world got built. All of it. All the men who built the skyscrapers felt scared. They did it anyway. You need to become a man of action. Stop worrying about how you feel and start worrying about what you're supposed to be doing. He's, he stated his, his objective, and so he's just going to do it. Like all these, all these messages now, it's all about, oh, how, how do I feel? That's not relevant, dude. You set goals and you do the work. That's it. That is how you succeed at things. I don't feel like blah, blah. I feel like I'm not making... Shut up. Like, shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up with that. No one cares how you feel. I teach my kids that all the time. Like when they, I try to teach, this is, this is multifaceted, where I try to teach my kids that no one is ever going to make a decision that's going to affect them positively based on what they want. End of story, okay? So like when they come up to me and they go, daddy, I want to do blah, blah, blah. I go, no one cares what you want. And they go, oh, and then, you know, obviously I'll be like, I mean, listen, in reality, I'm the, I'm basically the only person that cares what you want. So what you need to do is you need to start framing things that you are trying to accomplish in a way where, how are you going to convince me that this is a good idea to do this? Right? Because I want this with anyone else is not going to work. What do I get out of it? Right? And, I, and I'm doing it. This is parenting. Like I'm, I'm intentionally doing this to teach them to think that way, where it's like, I need this person to do X for me to get the, the outcome that I want. Well, why would they do it? They don't care what I want. I need to figure out a reason it benefits them. And as they practice that when they're growing up, when they're adults, it'll be absolutely second nature then, right? No one cares about what you want and no one cares about how you feel, okay? They just don't outside of your immediate family. No one cares. That's not how you should live your life. And convincing kids that they do is how you get this thing that we have going on over here right where feelings drive everything does this seem like just our our current state society does this seem like this is headed in a good direction 
does this does this feel like we're headed in a good direction? Because the next video I'm about to do is about the backlash to Mr. Um, and this next one's going on Jesse on everything. It's about the backlash to Mr. Beast's last video where he cured blindness for a thousand people. And all these woke people are are lighting him up. I, I, I'd say it's, it's unfathomable, okay? Unfathomable, okay? And this is what I'm saying. This is like, this is what this, this culture creates. It, look at this. I mean, I don't know if you can see this, but if Mr. Beast truly wanted to do something good and truly cares about disabled people, he wouldn't monetize their suffering and make them tap dance on video just so he could slap it up on YouTube. I'm tired of having to perform gratitude for wealthy people just to stay alive. This is from a, a check mark on, on Twitter named Kendall Brown, a healthcare advocate fighting to defeat Republican supermajorities. It's like, it's exactly what I'm talking about. Feelings, feelings, feelings. What are you talking about? Mr. Beast cured blindness for a thousand people because he puts things on YouTube, which generates money, which he then reinvests every time into helping people, which then he generates more money from, which he reinvests, and then he reinvests that into helping other people, and then he gets money, and then he reinvests, like, hello, he's helping people in every single step along the way, and because he's making money, this seems like it doesn't make sense, like, feelings, moron, 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 you're a healthcare advocate, you're a healthcare advocate that is, that is, that is, uh, spazzing out online about a thousand people who couldn't afford a surgery getting surgery that cured blindness. Moron. Moron. The exact kind of person that is hoping that Andrew Tate rots in jail because reasons. I can't. I can't. I can't. 